What's up y'all, thank you very much for tuning in today, I hope you're having the most excellent day today. So today I want to talk to you guys about how long we, as a fandom, should really hold a grudge against some of the less reputable types within our community. So while for the most part the furry fandom is a rather wholesome and, you know, uh, welcoming place, there are some rather unsavory dudes who have snuck in over the years and sometimes they you know slip up and you know reveal their gnarliness to us and we as a fandom generally are pretty decent at policing this kind of behavior when it crops up generally if we see it we deal with it pretty damn quick generally within a few hours of someone saying something there will be a beware up on the internet and the furry fandom at large will know about the situation and yeah, sometimes it can take the fandom a little while to get into action, like what happened with like Kiro the Wolf and that, and his rather gnarly behaviour. But when we do see this kind of stuff, the fandom as a whole generally is pretty decent at dealing with these types. But my question to you today, dudes, is at what point we should show some of these furries a little sign of forgiveness. Now, I'm not saying we should forgive those who've done some most heinous stuff, like what Kiwi the Wolf did. I mean, like, the level of depravity he went to, no. The, that kind of stuff, no. And, like, you know, where someone has been proven to be, like, a rapist or something like that, nah, bro. No, no forgiveness there. Heinous acts like that, I'm not saying we should forgive. But like the lesser stuff, where they've said something 20 years ago, which is a little bit gnarly, and they've got to beware about that, man. You know, the fandom has, you know, rightfully kind of distanced themselves from this person, but maybe they've changed or something, or, you know, they've acknowledged that they were a bit of a dickhead back in the day, but they've changed their ways. Should we forgive these dudes? And the reason I'm asking this is I was recently on Facebook, and I saw a beware post come up on a furry for something they said, literally... 20 years ago, back when they were a teen. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when a lot of furries are teens, they say some ridiculous stuff just to be edgy. And this looked like something that this dude had said 20 years ago, just to be edgy. It's not something they believed in anymore. I, mean, I doubt they believed in it at the time. They were just saying it to cause shock value. But they were getting up aware in 2022 for something they said in like 2003. Which is before even I joined the fandom. And a prime example now. This guy keeps coming to me and saying. Are you ever going to do an episode on this furry? I'm not going to name names. Because they have this piece of artwork. Depicting their persona as a feral having sex. And I, I'm looking at it and it's like. Okay it's pretty gnarly dude. But it's like. They commissioned it back in the 90s. Now a lot of furries who've joined the furry community in the last 5-10 years may not realise this. But back 20 years ago, back before I even joined the fandom. Uh, there was a lot more of a liberal look on Fell Outlook. Now I was never into it, I've never commissioned anything. But back then I do know a lot of furries did commission it innocently. Not realising the rather gnarly connotations that went along with it. I mean, you look at the artist Tani Dereal. Half the stuff they drew back then was feral artwork, and it was considered perfectly normal. It didn't have any implications back then. But as we've grown as a community, as we've grown as a group consciousness, we have realised that there are some rather you know, unsavoury things that go along with that type of thing. And we've moved away from it. And a lot of folks have grown with the fandom and realise that now. But they've still got the artwork from 20 years ago when they thought it was okay. And are they going to be held accountable, even though they're not into that kind of stuff? Should they be held accountable for what they did or what they said when they first joined the fandom and thought it was, you know, being edgy or being okay or, you know, being acceptable? You know, back when I first went to UFOs, I ran into a Belgian fur who told me that his grandfather had been, you know, in the SS during the war. And he still had his uniform. And he was going to wear it out in public in Germany. And I'm like, bruh, what are you doing? And even back then I realised that was dumb. But he was an edgy teenager. He thought it'd be funny. Now, I, I still know the dude. And he has completely changed. He would never do anything like that. He knows how gnarly it is and how, you know, what kind of effect it would have. And he knows that it's not something to say. It's, it's, it's not something to joke about. But back then, he, he was laughing about it because it was edgy. And, you know, he could get a rise out of people. Now, should we hold him accountable in 2022 for something he did back in 2007? I don't think we should because he's a changed dude, man. He's like, he's grown and evolved and realized that what he said back then 
wasn't cool. Now, th there is a caveat to all this, though, and that is that if they haven't changed, we definitely shouldn't forgive them. I mean, like, if they said something 20 years ago, and we're like, oh, that's pretty gnarly, but maybe they've changed. But then we go look, and they haven't changed, fuck them. Um, if they haven't changed and they're still spouting that shit or doing that shit, then yeah, get rid of them. We don't need them in the fandom. But if they've grown up and realised their mistakes, we should give them the benefit of the doubt. And I realise people can say one thing and think another. I mean, you all may remember last year I made a video about Bolt Shepard and the rather grim artwork he commissioned. Now, he has told me personally that he has changed, he has sought therapy for everything he did back then, um, and that he's apologised to loads of people. And I'm like, on the face of it, that's pretty radical. But from what I've seen online, he is still associating with alleged knobs, Spooky Fox. So it's like, has he really, ch have you really changed? Bolt Shepard, if you're watching this, have you really changed or, you know, are you just hiding it now? Because, you know, chatting with Bookie Fox is pretty incriminating, dude. It's kind of implying that you haven't really changed, that you're still doing the same shit different day. And, you know, when we're unsure about these things, like with Bolt Shepard, like we're not certain, we should, you know, take what they say with a pinch of salt. I mean, we should take what they say with a pinch of salt anyway. But that shouldn't preclude them from rejoining the fandom if they have changed their ways. So what I'm proposing to you guys, dudes, in conclusion, is that we should have, like, a furry statute of limitations where they did or said something 20 years ago, and it wasn't massively bad like what Keo Wolf has done. Then maybe we should just kind of, like, you know, be a little bit more chill about these dudes and, you know, think before we just outright ban them from coming stuff for something they may have said, like, 20 years ago, just to be edgy or, you know, just for a little bit of a kick. I mean, dudes, come on. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And drop in the comments below your opinion on the matter. Whether you think we should show some forgiveness to dudes. Or whether you think you said it once, you said it for all time and you're never coming back. Um, also, consider dropping by my Patreon. Support me to make more most excellent videos like this. And swing by my Discord, come chill with the dudes, there's the most excellent people in there. But other than that, you have a most excellent day, an amazing weekend, and I will see you guys in the next video, okay? Take care, ta -ra.